He is one of the 20th century's greatest aviators. He has played a major part in the evolution of flight and in the process set records that will never be broken. My father was in the Royal Flying Corps during World War I. Now, originally, he was a balloon observer. When I was, I think, about eight years old, he took me up in a gamecock and sat me on his knee. And, of course, at that age, I hadn't the leg length to reach the rudder pedals, so he let me handle the stick a little. We didn't do anything aerobatic. My father was in an organisation which was often set up after World War I of um, former combatants um, meeting to exchange their experiences and just generally socialise. Here we were in Nazi Germany. How was the feeling? It was one of excitement, really, because everything was happening at that time in Germany. It was over a year before I actually got a posting to a squadron that was going to go on an aircraft carrier. By the time I got my posting to my first squadron, the Americans had um, offered us a thing called the Grumman Wildcat on lease land. But I could see this activity at one hangar. Finally, around about seven o'clock in the evening, it was beginning to lift, and there was furious activity at this hangar, and they eventually rolled out an aircraft, the like of which I'd never seen before, because it had no propeller. Of course, this was Britain's first jet aircraft, the Gloucester E-2839.